So welcome to an exclusive conversation for the healthcare hospitality industry. This is Healthcare Hospitality House Success Strategies for the Road Ahead, House Operations, Digital Fundraising, Donor Relationship Management, and Blended Live and Virtual Auctions and Events. We're going to go ahead and get started by talking to you just a little bit about what's in store today. And it's pretty self-explanatory, but just to let you know, we're going to introduce you to the faces that you see here, give us a, a little bit of a welcome and an introduction. Uh, we're also going to make sure that we hear from you. We have a couple of questions to sort of flex our muscles, although we've got a pretty interactive crowd as it is already. We're going to share with you, you a little bit about Ariva, and then we're going to jump right into the success strategies for the road ahead. And I've broken these down into three areas. Uh, Anne Trousseau, who is our VP of Healthcare Hospitality and National Organization Partnerships, who you'll meet just in a, in a minute or two is going to be leading everything for us today, joined by the panelists. And then we're gonna have some questions and answers. So without any further hesitation, let me just go ahead and move you to our introductions. And I'm gonna begin on the, on the left of the screen. I don't know where she's actually sitting in proxim proximity, uh, but uh, on your screen, but Anne Trousseau is the VP Healthcare Hospitality and National Partnerships for Ariva. She works with the Ronald McDonald House Charity. She works with healthcare hospitality houses, including many HHN members. Uh, she works with nonprofits of all types, and she has decades of experience, but she can speak better to her background than I can. So I'm going to give Ann just a, a minute or two to give a quick intro, and then we'll be hearing from her throughout the session. Hello, Ann. Hey, David. Thanks for having me, and I'm looking forward to um, going through and showing some great success strategies that we've seen with our current clients that are hospitality houses. I'm really excited about this partnership we have with HHN. Uh, we've been in this field for so long, and I'm hoping that all you guys can benefit from what we've learned in managing those guests in your house and leveraging that information to raise more money and serve more in your community. So looking forward to it. That's terrific. And I'm going to work in a couple of names here. I'm going to let everyone know I would be remiss in not mentioning this, but Melissa Thompson, who's the executive director for HHN just joined us, so hello, Melissa. And we also want to welcome Pam Shriver, who is with Rosenbaum Family House in Morgantown, uh, West Virginia. So I'm going to move over to Jay, uh, who is to the right on the screen of uh, on the uh, slide. He is the co-president, chief auctioneer, and really just a fundraising and auction and event expert. Uh, in other words, a maestro. So I'm going to let Jay, really uh, just give a little bit of an intro and say hello. Thank you for joining us, Jay. All right. Well, thank you, David. Thank you for the opportunity to join uh, join you, Anne, on this panel. And uh, hello to all of our friends at the uh, at HHN. Uh, what a what a pleasure to, uh, to be able to talk a little bit today about helping you raise money. Uh, the, uh, the The work you do is uh, is incredibly important, and it gets funded with money. And uh, that is uh, that is my expertise is helping people raise money. So I'm sure there'll be questions and uh, hopefully by the end of the end of the webinar today, uh, I'll throw a couple of tips out there that might help you do that for yourselves. Terrific. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jay. And to the right on the screen is David Blyer, who is co-founder and CEO of Ariva. We are very honored to have you join us today, David. And I'm just going to ask you to speak a little bit to our to our experience in the industry with healthcare and other nonprofits, but also just on our wonderful partnership with HHN. So a few words from David, please. Uh, first of all, David, thank you for including me in this web webinar. I do appreciate that. And I, I'd like to thank uh, the Healthcare Hospitality Network for their partnership and, and Melissa for all the work that you have done to really make this a truly wonderful partnership. And we, we really appreciate how much you also care about this industry and it is a very very important industry and 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 for you the members that are here and for the people in the audience that are really helping the healthcare industry as a whole you know we know what you do each and every day and how you help the local communities how you help the families that you're serving and and even the patients and you should really be proud of that i i, I you know as david mentioned you know one of the things that ariva has really done for this industry and we we, we are a big believer in it this has been an industry that Ariva has had incredible passion for and true belief. And it is a, a really important part of who we are as a company. So when you hear about hospitality, and Ann is really going to share a lot of, with you, so I won't steal a lot or any of it, 
But when you really look at the hospitality and the communities that you serve, there's so many other things that you need to do about in, in the community, creating more awareness, raising money, you know, you know, how do you retain your existing donors? How do you even acquire and you know, new donors? I mean, these are really important things. And one of the differences that Ariva put together was a solution for doing all of that. And, and you'll hear more about it. But it was something that is a major differentiator in the industry and no one else is quite doing what we're doing here today. You know, the important thing is not just about the software, but 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 the belief that we have in our partners. And, and our partners are our clients. We look at each and every client and what we look to do is make them very successful. We take a lot of pride in that. We talk about this every day. We deliver on what we hear each and every day. And, and as you'll see in the presentation today, how we've actually executed on the things that we truly believe that can serve you and the clients that are out there. So I, I thank you again for allowing Ariva to participate and, and, and we look forward to any way that we can help you. I know this is an hour, but Phil, reach each and every one of us. So uh, thank you, David. Thank you, David. So that that is our our group. We're really filled with some great experts here, and uh, you know, pleased to have that. But really, the experts uh, out there that we want to hear from are you, and we'd like to understand a little bit about you and a little bit about your background. Again, you want those hellos? Keep uh, letting us know where you're from and jump in. If you don't, you want to remain incognito, then just say, "I don't want to be recognized," but hello anyhow, because we still want to hear from you. Um, but here is a uh, a poll to get your muscles flexed a little bit, and the first one is uh, really on, I'm going to just go ahead and see this, you'll see this on your screen in just a moment. And the question is, to help us understand and to really sort of, this is a responsive session, we would love to hear which of the following would you like to learn more about on today's session? The answer is you're going to hear about them all, but we just want to know which ones are of particular interest. You can choose more than one answer. And by the way, you can do a write-in vote, if you will. So if you choose other, you just share a comment in the question box. But we have three different areas here. Again, you could choose all of them. If one of them is overwhelmingly what you want to hear about, choose only that one. And it just kind of tells us, you know, where you're at right now. I can tell you right now that we're, we're already seeing a pretty good mix. Uh, please join. I kind of watch till everyone's entered and see when we're at a good level. But we're looking at the, you know, the, uh, you know, the largest number, probably because of familiarity, of course, is streamlining healthcare hospitality. Uh, and operations and services. And then uh, also the, the blended live and virtual auctions, the hybrid notion, the digital fundraising very closely uh, intertwined with that. But what's great about this is we're really talking about all-in-one approaches. So I think we're gonna hit a little bit of everything. So I wanna thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to also move then to the next, uh, to the next uh, poll, which is going to be uh, right here coming up for you. And this one is very specific to the times we're in. And I want to just tell you, we recently did a session out there. We have lots of educational content. It was called Don't Let the Delta Variant Pause Your Event Auction and Event Fundraising Plans or Strategies. And we're going to talk a lot about that and just what you can do no matter the road ahead. But we'd love to hear from you about your what you really have planned for the next six months. Are you planning one or more virtual fundraising events? Are you looking at live fundraising events that are planned or scheduled or kind of have a big question mark or a head scratch around them right now? Do you not have any plans for live or virtual events, which by the way, uh, there's still time and you can absolutely do this in the, in the drop of a, of a coin. And uh, you know, maybe you're just at a place where you know you want to do hybrid blended virtual and live events and you just aren't really sure about how to go, uh, to, how to go about that. So what's interesting right now, I'd just love to have everyone chime in. I am not seeing, uh, what I'm seeing right now is that people have live events planned. Uh, people have maybe no plans yet, and then they would like to discuss hybrid blended. It does not look like anyone who's responded so far said they have a live event plan or a virtual event planned. And that could very well be because we've really pivoted to a place where, you know, the, the notion, the real benefit coming out of uh, what we've all been through is that there's a real uh, merging together and hybrid is kind of the way of where things are going, the way of the future to take a, a little bit of a cliche response. So that's great. Uh, we did have a couple with a virtual that chimed in just now, but mostly we're looking at people that have events planned or want to know how to make it more hybrid. So you're going to, you're in the right place for that as well. So thank you for that participation. 
I hope that that was uh, that that was useful for you. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, you should be seeing my screen again now. Uh, if one of my panelists could just nod for me quick. All right, perfect. Thank you. And uh, we're going to go ahead and move to the next slide here. And uh, we're going to do a little bit about Ariva. I'm going to delay the video here. We shared this out to many of the houses to be following afterwards. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and turn it over to Ann and David chime in where you will as well or myself and and tell us a little bit about Ariva, uh, you know, and uh, our background and what we do. Sure. I know a lot of you are new to uh, Ariva and haven't heard of us. We we do have, we have been around around 30 years, <laughs> and I have been with the company for a lot of that. So, um, and we've been working with hospitality houses that entire time. So that's why we do have the depth of uh, features in these programs. I've been showing a lot of the HHN members, the program individually over the past couple of weeks, and I've been floored at what some of you are using that you don't have the tools to do things like invoicing and do things like uh, getting analysis of who you're serving and who you're, you know, very easily out of the programs. Our programs really, because we have such a huge segment of the hospitality house market using them, we've really been able to continue to update the products based on what you're telling us. I mean, the, th the way we differ is we have user groups for hospitality house. Uh, that was a question that was asked this morning on a demo I was on. So yes, we have specific user groups and um, that this speaks to how different we are. I mean, I know we're talking here about us as a company, but all these things are what differentiate us. I was told that other people's user groups just have users on them. Our user groups have our chief technology officer, our support people there to work with you individually. So this is what differentiates us. We're here to make you successful. We're your partner. We're not your vendor. We're your partner in this. And that's how Reva is really different. I am going next to the next slide. There is getting some background noise. I'm trying to turn off the end. I'm sorry. I'm That's busy. okay. Jump ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what you're going to see today is Exceed Further. And everything that we offer in Exceed Further are those little puzzle pieces down below that were just there. <laughs> so anything from donor management to campaigns to grants, and, and grants both ways, giving out grants or, or seeking grants. Events, hospitality, of course, peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising, um, all that functionality is what is in Exceed Further, and you can use any part of that. You can use it all. Uh, that's the great thing about our program. We have hospitality houses using us simply for hospitality, and but the majority are using us for everything, donors, events, hospitality, because the benefit is being able to leverage that information you know and the relationships you have and be able to see everything in one program. So that's what we'll look at and exceed further. What you're seeing here is absolutely everything we're offering. So when you look under donor relationship, households and organizations, right there we differ from a lot of products out there because we're allowing you to put all the members of the household into one record to see who that is that's staying at the house. So that's a big thing right there. Gifts and pledges, email communications, texting, whether that's texting about a donor, an event starting, or texting that the room is clean. Those text messages are going to be able to be done out of the program, and you're going to see those in someone's journal, so you know all the communication with the family. Um, event management, memberships, volunteers, campaigns, grants, guests, family room for day visitors. Some of you have want to track day visitors. That's what a family room on the iPad app will offer. And then, of course, reporting. You've got to be able to report back to your key decision makers, your board members, your stakeholders. They have to understand how many you're serving, when you're having to turn people away. This is what's key. We can put all kinds of data in here, but if you can't get it out easily, it's of no use. So that is key, is the reporting. Under the right is digital fundraising. This is all the front facing what you're going to see the donor sees. Um, so online donation pages that will handle pledges, reoccurring giving, giving in memory, giving in honor, real visual. What I heard yesterday in a demo was our giving page is just straightforward fields. There's no visual. There's no photo of what we're doing to remind that donor. 
you, I'll show you some of the clients' uh, giving pages that really tell a story, and that's what you need to be doing. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising. We saw more and more uh, houses really take advantage of that feature last year with COVID, having to cancel events, so getting board members to do peer-to-peer, -peer, having volunteers run do their birthdays through peer-to-peer. -peer. That comes right into the database, too. Team fundraising. Again, hearing feedback, we introduced team fundraising recently so that when you're doing, whether it's a ride, a run, uh, you can get creative on that. Uh, we can have that and have it fully integrated. Event registration, membership, volunteer signups, text to fund, um, and then entire websites. We'll redo your entire website, and man, do we have some beautiful before and after shots from the websites we've done that I'd be happy to share. Um, this means you have one vendor for everything. And that's a one-time fee to do a, a website redesign. There's no ongoing fees from us to maintain it and help you maintain it. So that's something we can always quote for you as well. The big reason and the big way we differ, and this is what I alluded to earlier and David did as well, is under client services. These services that we help in terms of onboarding you and continue to support you as you get the most out of these programs, this is what differentiates us. I'm an account manager that works with you throughout it. We have client success and we have tech support, and that's all included in your contract with us. So this is where it's really a differentiator. This is the feedback I'm getting from those of you that have been using other products is that you don't have access to pick up the phone and call. You don't have the ability to get a response quickly when you have a question. With us, you have multiple resources to get those answers you need. You've also got something like Areva Academy, which is going to give you unlimited access to on-demand training sessions. So when you have a new volunteer sitting in front of that computer, you can have client success talk to them, or you can have them watch a quick video on how they're going to pull those guest registrations in or donations in. So that's Areva Academy. Under the right is what Jay is going to talk about, auction software. And I'll tell you, he is an expert. What I love about all this auction tools we now offer that are completely integrated with the database is that they are so responsive to what you're needing. Because we actually provide auctioneers which are at your events, they're understanding what's working and what's not working. And they're putting that right back into their software tools as well as into all the services they're providing. So that's what Jay's going to talk about after I've talked about hospitality and fundraising. That's great. Thank you. And, and before we go to the next slide, I'm just going to throw it back to David uh, Blyer real quick. Do you have anything to add to this slide? Um, sure. You know, and it was really great. And one thing that would, I, I think is really important also as far as a differentiator to the product, which makes it really more efficient, helping create awareness, helping, you know, the operations is, is a really important thing is there's a lot of applications that you just saw. But one of the really other benefits of this, whether somebody is doing an online guest registration form, um, whether somebody is giving a donation, whether somebody is registering for a vet, or maybe a, a donor has built a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, all of that information automatically and instantaneously goes into the donor relationship management database. It automatically sends out a thank you acknowledgement receipt to that person that either gave a donor, registered for that online guest, automatically, and this is really important, sends you as a staff member, it could be one or as many as you want to get a notification that Ann just registered for the event or Ann just registered as an online guest or gave a donation. And that also creates best practices. And I don't know how many in the audience here have given a donation and never received a phone call but you will get this information immediately. And the nice thing about that is you can pick up the phone and say, hey, we just got your online guest registration or you just read, thank you so much. That take, they will never forget those things. Those are small little things, but with the automated process that we have created. And the other nice thing is, I don't know how, whether you're giving a donation or registering or whatever you're doing, you're also, why we say it creates awareness is because they never leave your website. Once they click submit, they never leave. They, they can stay on that existing page, they can go and look. And what we've seen and what we measure is that 
250% on average, people are staying on the websites. If you're kicked off the website, well, we're so busy every single day, we go on to the next thing. So they're learning about what you're doing in the community. They're learning if you're doing an annual campaign. They're learning if you need something locally. So that's just another added benefit of the applications. Great, right. thank you. Yeah, thanks, David. So what we're gonna start with is talking about hospitality, since most of you on this call have this need. <laughs> and we'll show you some of this functionality. This is just giving you an overview of everything we're offering, yeah. guest management within the uh, within the program, as well as online guest stay requests. So whether those are coming from a hospital, a social worker, or a returning family, being able to have that come in and be completely secure. This is not a fax. It's not a phone call. Uh, you're not reading someone's writing. This is a form filled out, coming in for you to check to see if they've stayed with you in the past. We'll go over that. Then being able to text them, their room is ready, or the room is clean, or dinner has been uh, change the time. Movie night has been canceled due to COVID. These are the kinds of things that the texting can really help you communicate to that family. Um, and then the family room check-in, uh, being able to do that, whether you're having an iPad app we have for them to just check themselves in and say, hey, yeah, I'm coming for the day and I'm just going to use the uh, kitchen or I'm just going to use the um, internet from, from you. So a family room check-in, that is another piece that can be added on. We've recently done this guest paperless PDF. What this does is take us full circle so that when you are register, you're getting a referral into the database, now you're having to register them and they have to fill out other paperwork. We're now putting that online so it's streamlined. So I'll show you that too. What you're seeing here is just everything via mobile phone. Um, that's the beauty of all this is you can see it easily that way. And this is the, the information that Jay will be covering later uh, after I've talked about hospitality a little bit more. He's going to be covering everything that Maestrosoft uh, offers, that we offer you to run your virtual event or live event. And, and again, being mobile optimized. Yeah, so that's great. yeah, being able to optimize that off your phone for sure. Yeah. So we're going we're to do one more flex of your interactive muscles uh, here again, folks. And I'm going to let you know we're going to be asking this throughout because we've already had a few folks ask and say there's a lot here. This is not the be-all, end-all. We're going to walk through whatever we can today. And we're going to give you an opportunity, actually, just as kind of our gift here during the giving season. Uh, we do it all the time, but it sounds nice to say that. We're willing to give you a free consultation and demo of uh, the strategies we're talking about today. It could be five minutes, could be 15, could be an hour. I I've known it to go much longer. Uh, we're here for you. And we like to say we're with you for good. So. You should be seeing a quick place where you can just respond where you're at right now. We'll come back with this again later if you happen to miss it. But it is uh, just saying, you know, would you like to have a free consultation uh, and uh, and demo? Uh, right, so, and this is great. It can be focused on exactly what you want. We've had so many of these over the past couple of weeks since being a partner and joining HHN. And we can focus on hospitality, on fundraising, on everything. But it's really, these are one-on-one -on -one where we're looking at your what you're using now, and if we can improve upon that, and if we have the functionality that you need. I'd give you a great example. You know, they, when I say these are truly, these are not sales pitches. I mean, obviously we're here to talk to you about the products, but if you get on, we're gonna help you, and you're gonna leave with information you didn't have beforehand. So someone could just come on and say, oh my goodness, we have a live event, and we're not sure that this is going to be something we can do entirely live. What do we do now? Is it too late? And, and it could just be that. It could be that conversation. It could just be, listen, we're not sure exactly what we could employ to really be uh, really set up for Giving Tuesday. It could be anything. So please, you know, respond. Again, we'll come back and ask for your participation on that again later and give you a chance. And if you just want to, if it's easy to drop a note in the, in the comment box, we'll do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and now uh, appreciate your uh, you know, bearing with us through some of those great uh, bits of information, and we're going to jump right into this success strategies for the road ahead. Anne's going to lead us on this one. The first one, although these are, I'm going to let a little bit of the cat out of the bag. These are all intertwined, integrated is the word, and uh, fully integrated is the, the two words to remember. So this is on streamlined hospitality, house services, and operations. Go ahead and take it from there, Anne. 
Yeah, and as I was saying earlier, we've worked a long time with hospitality houses, and so we've really tried to streamline these processes for you so you're spending more time with the clients you're serving and less time on the computer. Um, and part of that is by introducing these online guest referrals and the way for this paperwork to be online so you're not dealing with a lot of paper. This means simplifying communications and being able to have this whole thing be touchless, especially during COVID. That was a real plus where they weren't dealing with all this paperwork. Um, and that's been a mandate for a lot of our hospitality is, houses is to reduce paperwork. And that's what all these tools are helping you do. In addition, really leveraging the relationship you have between the guests and the donors and relationships between those two. So what I'm going to show you here in just a second is the um, guest stay uh, information, the management of how you manage the guests when they're staying at your house, as well as how you get that information into the program, communicating with them once they're at your house, um, and then with the follow-up. So this is all the kind of tools that we offer uh, that can be turned on to really have a full service package uh, to manage your house. And I'd, I would add, uh, Ann, or just ask uh, for confirmation, it sounds like what really is working now is to be automated, to have things streamlined, uh, yeah. and not just for your donors, your volunteers, your supporters, but for your staff. I mean, we know how we all were sitting a year and a half ago when everyone had to scramble and make sure that they were connected, right. not just to all of those folks, but also to each other. So, so Absolutely. great stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it goes without saying this program is cloud-based and you're able to access it anywhere and set up user roles. So you see these different areas that are on the screen right now. There may be certain people that should only see certain things. And maybe you're look, using us for everything. Operations are the only people that are going to see that guest detail. The donor and the fundraising folks are only looking at their part, um, but they see the relationship between the two. So that's the beauty of this program. Yeah. I've got a few questions that I'm not going to throw in now that are just here and there, and I know where we're going to answer them because I have the deck. Uh, that's my secret power. Um, but um, I would just tell you, keep if you have questions on anything or there's anything you're wondering about, throw it in there. If it's immediately relevant, I'm going to I'm going to jump in. Uh, so let's go ahead to the next slide. Uh, one minute here. We're going to take it. We're actually going to take this now and give control over to you, Ann, to take us for a little yeah. bit of a tour. If you will, right. so uh, if you want to just go ahead and speak to. Uh, yeah, the, what you're seeing on screen right about. here, which I'll show is, is an online guest referral form and also someone using the text uh, capabilities that we're offering to text home to 71760. What's great about this texting capabilities, that word can change based on the season or the event. So um, those are some of the capabilities I'm going to show you now. Um, so are you guys seeing. Uh, we are seeing the uh, guest request form. Oh, great. Okay. Um, just put up the audience view so I see what you're saying. Okay, perfect. So what we're looking at here is a guest day request. And this is a live form that we have. As you can see, you can set up a different one for social workers or whatnot, but this is the kind of information you're capturing. You can have capture information up to five patients, up to five guests on here. Um, you're able to predefine fields. Um, all these fields are coming out of Exceed further. Uh, these are user-defined questions that you can set up. And as uh, we get information about the guest that's actually going to be staying in the house, and you can decide if you want information about guest and patient or just one of those. But being able to put in their mobile phone and then being able here to bring that in as an opted in so you know immediately you're going to be able to text to them. So that's a field that can be added to this online uh, registration form. So here's some questions they're asking as well. So that's the kind of form that would be right off your website. Now, if we go and look at how this form looks for some of our clients, here's a hospitality house. And if we click on uh, how to stay, that's taking them right off their main website and onto um, the page where they can find out more information. So are they a medical provider or are they a returning family? And different, each of these goes to a different one of our forms. But the bottom line is, is it's completely integrated, even though we're not managing this entire website for this particular client. This is their website. But if you see at the top, 
it doesn't show any other address other than that particular organization. It doesn't look like they're, they've left the website at all. And if we look at this, let me just go up down here. You're seeing, I'm showing you this particular one because they have used more user-defined fields than any of our other clients. So if we scroll down, they're asking quite a few questions. And keep in mind, this is just to determine if they have space at the house. This is not full registration, okay? But they've got quite a few questions. Anything they're putting on these forms is flowing into Exceed Further to that particular stay record, okay, that's associated with that individual. So this, this is an example of a very detailed guest stay form, all right, that comes right into the database. We've also got some houses, like JW House, that has this password at all. So if you look at their uh, website, someone has to enter a password to get to this form. So that might be a social worker. They don't want returning families to fill this form out. You can have it look that way as well. Okay? So if you look at this particular organization, and this is one of the hospitality houses where we have done the entire website. You can see right on the home page, we're on their home page now, which you can see is showing their impact immediately um, of who they're serving. We can come up and click on how to stay, and that takes right to them right to um, their online room request. That's okay, true. so this is this is an example, really, of different ways of doing this, you know, and how you want that to look. Of course, we're doing this entire website. They can also quickly come over and make a donation, which we'll cover as well. But um, that that gives you an idea. Now let's go into Exceed and take a look at how that looks when that comes in, okay? So if we go into the database here, and let me minimize that, um, okay. If we come in, we're looking at a dashboard right now, and this is showing me guests arriving, guests departing, guests in the house, and you can be looking at that any way you want and choose the time frame for what you're, what you're looking at, and also look at what locations you want. If you have multiple locations, you could view them both here or you could look at a single location. And once you've got this dashboard to how you want it, you're able to save those settings so that it shows the right amount based on the date and the number you're looking at each time you log in, okay? Over on the right, you've got quick links of how to manually add a guest day or a new guest family if it's not coming in from a referral, but otherwise, if we come, well, excuse me, let me go back here for a second here. Whoop, whoop, there we go. Um, if you come back, it, it, this is where the, the referrals would be coming into yeah. in, under these online transactions. So coming in here, you would see the name and the referral, and then you'd accept them in. You've got things once you're in here, if we're trying to communicate with them, that you, we've accepted them and put them in a room. We can certainly do that through uh, whether it's text or an email, being able to uh, notify them their room is clean and send that text out. That's something that can be done. We can come into the guest manager here and we're gonna be able to see everybody in the room. Uh, we're gonna be able to look at rooms visually to see where we have room to put someone in um, and being able to easily, if you just need to search and check availability for a date in the future. You can search and say, look, I've got someone that's got to come in next year. Do I have room? Um, you can easily click on a room uh, and find the room status. So if you've put a room out of service because it's, it's got a problem in it, there's the sink is not draining or something, you want that to put that room out of service so your statistics are accurate at the yeah. end of the So this is the kinds of things you can do within the program You've certainly got a uh, manage a wait list and a request list and invoicing. Of course, you can invoice right out of this program, show detailed invoice, or um, be able to um, show just a summary of all their, their charges. Um, some of the reports that you might uh, look at would be, uh, let's see if we look at over here, occupancy report. So this is showing you Again, being able to report to your stakeholders how many rooms were available, and that goes back to that making rooms inactive, and how many rooms were occupied. So this kind of report, an occupancy report, could be really helpful to report back. Um, you've also got a room roster, and this is a detailed room roster showing you who's in the rooms 
And if they have special needs, someone's pregnant or they need a crib or whatnot, being able to see that as well. Um, and then a room roster that's a more cleaner one and being able to see those people that have stayed past their expected date, that's what's showing you there because we know a lot of times the expected date is not something that they can stick with. So these are the kinds of reports you can generate from within Exceed Further. Of course, if we come up to reports and we look at uh, guest, you'll see there's just all kinds of reports and filters can be set on all those and it can be exported as well. Yeah. You can also schedule reports. So this is a real important thing. Somebody said, I want to run a report every day and see who's arriving. Well, you can go in and you can have a favorite report that might be something like a um, the wait list for today or whatnot and have that arrive in your inbox every day by going in and scheduling that report. So showing who it should be sent to when it should arrive, should arrive daily to my inbox, what time, and what is it, you know, what is the report. So this is really going to help you as well so that everybody is well versed on who's arriving today, who's departing, what the wait list looks like maybe. Um, any of that can be done. As soon as you saved a report as a favorite, it can be set up and scheduled, okay? So that is kind of there. Now, what I also want to show you is the paperless PDF. So once you've got them in your house, and you've said they can now come, um, what you've got the ability to do is pull out data and be able to see them uh, register online. So if I can come in here, if I'm looking at all the guests in the house, I'm going to look maybe right here. Actually, I'm going to come out and look at that. I can come right out here and look at this is an example of an online form that is pulling the data out of Exceed further onto it that we already know from their referral, but then they're able to add additional fields and additional files to this. This is one that's already been attached in the database, but you see they've initialed the house rules, um, they've signed off on contagious diseases, they've uh, you know put all their ID information that you need, and this is now attached to their record in the database. Okay, so this is an example of the paperless PDF that is also available. In addition to the referral forms we showed you, they can get this online. The way we see hospitality houses using this form is some are doing it in advance so that they can show up with this information already attached, um, and some are doing it as they walk in the door. So as they walk in the door, they're handing them an iPad with all this online forms ready for them to verify that everything is correct and add the additional information. This way they're able to answer questions. But if we talk about success rates, we've seen those that have gone from 45 minutes to register someone to 15 minutes because of these online forms and being able to have that data come right out um, of the program uh, without having to re-enter it. That's the hugest, that's the biggest thing, you know really. So um, let's see. I think that kind of covers really quickly everything you're, you're looking at from the hospitality. And I'm looking at a, a view of Exceed Further that is just for a house manager or for hospitality. You can see we've just got those areas that we're touching right here. When I uh, talk about fundraising, we're going to look at a, a program that shows you all the other functionality in the program. Okay? David? Great. If you want to just release the controls and then I'll grab it back here. Um, I, I do have a question that kind of segues us nicely over to the uh, to the next session and that is uh, someone asking and saying so this is all connected uh, or is this is this one database is what it says for your fundraising and this and there's a question mark so if you could speak to that as I bring everything back up. Yes, um, absolutely. This is a one database that one name is in there. So if I stayed at your house, I might be a household in the database, but also we've donated. So you're going to see gifts and you're going to see all that in the program as I show you the fundraising side. I'll Hello? Yes, can you oh. hear me? <laughs> I think it just flipped out for a minute, so 
Um, you want me to repeat that? Yeah, why don't you just real quickly? Okay. I, I don't know yeah. if everyone else did. So, I didn't hear you for a minute. Yeah, I said I was muted for some reason, but yeah, so basically it's all one database and you can access the piece that you are working with within the organization of the house. So I could be in the database once, but you're going to see history about the stay we had with my child five years ago, but you're also going to see my donations. You're going to see if I volunteered, if I've attended an event, all in the same place. And that's what I'm going to show you in the fundraising piece of this. Great. All right, folks. So I think what we're going to do here is just uh, I'm going to kind of close this up. We have a we have a um, on this part, we have a testimonial from just one of the uh, uh, examples that you saw, you know, Ronald McDonald House Charities of Idaho, and there's countless uh, testimonials there. I, one thing I did want to share with you, and I think we talked about it earlier, just in terms of, you know, the kind of organization we are and how we're with our clients for good across all industries, but our background of three decades of working with the healthcare hospitality industry. And I just tell you, as uh, from from my perspective, we have, uh, I'll choose one example. I know some folks Couple of folks have said they joined us. They're looking uh, because I guess uh, Blackbot had made an announcement that they're no longer going to be offering the guest family module uh, at some point, uh, and I don't know the details of it. But they just indicated they were looking at other things. I tell you that we uh, we love all the solutions out there. Uh, we we have a, we partner with Blackbot uh, because of our Meistersoft solutions. Uh, they turned to those so that they had an offering uh, in terms of auction and event uh, capabilities when it comes to virtual and live and hybrid and everything. And they actually came to us some time back, I guess, with this in mind, wanting to get a demo of Ariva's hospitality suite. And uh, they uh, took a very thorough demo. They vetted the solution, looked at all of the kinds of capabilities, and they're actually recommending this to folks who are making that move. So I think that speaks volumes that, I mean, we're out there uh, doing what makes sense partnering where we have to to uh, to get the information to you but um, that's certainly something we can speak to more about with you individually but I wanted to share that out there there's a lot of, uh, of good referral points there so with well, that, and we and, have yeah. yeah we have been converting folks from that product for many years um, I think our first folks moved from that product three or four years ago and a lot of them were part of that user group and talked about the differences in the user group there versus our user group but yeah, we're really familiar with that data and we can certainly work with you one-on-one -on -one if we need to migrate that data. I will say we've had some chapters that have moved to us for everything and some chapters that have moved to us for Simply Hospitality to start with. So certainly have those options. As David said, one of the beautiful things now is that this Maestrosoft, all the fundraising stuff you're gonna see from Jay does have an integration with Razor's Edge as well as Exceed Further. So you have some options there too. I'm, I have to share a comment, and I know she won't mind. This is our friend Melissa, and she always she always brings a, a, a chuckle to the room, but I also a tear to my eye because she said this integration brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> but I guess you know that's uh, certainly been come across here. But thank you for that, Melissa. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to uh, throw this over to the next section, which we just segued to, and I'm going to keep rolling right into it. Yeah. And this yeah. is about how you bring all those other pieces together in terms of digital fundraising and donor relationship right. management. So I'll, you can yeah. Be here. Yeah, and that is the beauty of it. I will say that's great to hear, but I know I had someone the other day that said they were speechless. They could not believe this product was out there. They've been looking for something like this for some time that actually does so much. I mean, now with the event integration, the donations integrated, the online guest, the website, that we can host for you. I mean, we are a one-stop shop in many ways. You don't have vendors pointing fingers at different vendors because something doesn't work, because we're doing it all. So that's the beauty of, of using this for everything. And that speaks to what David's got on slide right now, is being able to have as much as you can in one program is really a benefit, I would say. Um, where that can be possible, we can be the solution for you. Well, I think I would just add in as well, I mean, what the important point as well, and this I, I've actually had this conversation with Melissa and others, is as you're looking at all, like you're looking at the folks that you're going to be interacting with when it comes to the services you provide, your guests, the donors, the, the guests, the families, the interested others, the companies that are so supportive, they're also, uh, they're, they're multi-tiered, if you will, right? So they're not a, a guest and a family of a guest is not just a family of a guest, they're also a potential supporter and they're an advocate and they have companies and they have relationships 
and this brings it all together in a very holistic view. So that's uh, that's definitely well, a good and thing this is this. this is even more so true with our transplant houses and with our houses that take in adults because they've got a lot of contacts that are potential donors. You want to see that relationship, as opposed to the Ronald McDonald houses that are taking in children. It's really different. You've got even more potential to leverage relationships, I think, with social media. Yeah. I'm gonna jump right so, past this slide, Anne, because it yeah. talks about what we're doing. And the, so what's working now is what we're doing. And why we're doing what we're doing is because it's what's working now. I could have shortened that slide, but we're gonna move right ahead. Uh, to the next piece here and let you show some live uh, examples yeah. here. I just took back the controls. I'm going to give them to you again smoothly, but you right. know the drill. Fill the air with wonderful, uh, wonderful work. Yeah, and this is showing you some samples of team fundraising as well as looking at uh, managing an event and some of our clients, but I'm going to show you some live samples as well. And this data is going to come right in just like um, it does from, um, actually, let me close these cameras because I can't see my screen. Okay. So this is showing you, I'm going to start with a donation page, and then I'm going to address that question you had about is this all in one, you know, one database you're seeing. And we're going into Exceed further, and you'll see that. But this shows you the flexibility you have in setting up a donation page. Again, a nice visual. And they've got different pages for doing pledges. Again, we can have pledge payments coming in, even if they don't have their pledge number. Really, this I can't get over the details we have on these pages, being able to cover processing fees, of course, uh, bringing in mobile numbers and whatnot. So this is an organization that uses us for their donation page. I, I want to show this one because, wow, have they taken advantage. This is a group, and it's not a hospitality house, but because I love the way they've done their donation pages. Look, at these are all different appeals they are giving their donors a choice for. And when you click on a particular appeal, I think it's really telling the story of what they're doing. This is a COVID-19 appeal. Any of us could show this kind of what you were doing last year when you were trying to serve the clients that you could no longer house. Have a photo of that here and then having this, you know, this donation page. So it just gives you an idea of the details and the flexibility you have in setting up the pages to take reoccurring, to take giving in memory, in honor. I will tell you, I have given in memory of both my parents who have passed away and never received no, no notification to my siblings. This is not okay. We are experts at doing this kind of giving in memory or in honor. You want to make sure you can put in who, no, who should be notified of those gifts. This all comes into the database, okay? So this is an example of donation pages I've showed you. Now if we look at something like team fundraising, and whether that's a walk you're doing, a bike ride, or kindness matters team fundraising. I mean, you can make up these and do whatever you want, but you, we've got the flexibility for you to set up teams, top participants, top donors, being able to share that out, search for a team or an individual, make a donation on behalf. Team fundraising is really a nice, in addition to something like peer-to-peer, -peer, okay? Um, we've also got, this is an example we were showing of the text home, okay? All, everything I'm showing you, I'm not showing you anything that is not coming directly into the database, okay? Not having to re-enter it. Um, this particular hospitality house has done a great job with social media. On Instagram, they use their peer-to-peer -to, -peer to raise money to replace thermostats in the rooms. And so they posted on Instagram this great visual of here's what we're trying to raise money for. And then the link in their bio went right to their donation page for peer to peer. And they had a goal of how much they needed to raise for those thermostats. And then that was coming right into the database. What was great was after they raised the money, which literally was within two days, I believe, they posted a thank you of how that went. Thank you to the special supporters who contributed. Here's what happened. We reached our goal. That's a picture of their peer-to-peer -peer page. So I loved that they showed the results of this. They're doing this with their wish list. Many hospitality houses have wish lists. So they were so successful with this, they decided to do it with comforters. We're replacing comforters in all the rooms. Here's the total cost. What can you do? So this is a great example of using social media combined with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and the online forms to get that message out and to get the money in and you're not taking any more time to do that kind of data entry. Okay, so that gives you an idea of using social media.
Um, we've also, some of you, uh, if you have a need for managing volunteers, of course we can do that too. This is a general form they're taking in on their site to say, hey, I want to volunteer. Here's the area I'm interested in. Here are my skills. Here's where I went to high school. Here's my experience. And taking that in so then you can communicate with those volunteers and get them scheduled. So that's also something we offer as well. As far as event management, this is a great uh, way that we're, we're doing this. This comes right out of Exceed Further to be able to manage event registration. So if you decide to use something else for your actual event like Microsoft, we can do that too. But this is just the registration and the sponsorships coming in. And if you want to track the names of everybody sitting at that table and even meal preferences, we can do that as well. Okay? So all that comes right into the database. Now let's go into Exceed Further where you're seeing everything. And if I log well, and, in. And just as you do, yeah. I would just add, if you go back to any one of those pages uh, that you were just showing, I wanted to point something out for folks is that when you are at, at these when you are at these pages uh, for RMHC South Florida or whoever it happens to be or the social club, you, what you'll notice is, you know, these are the, you're not being directed to a page that says Ariba or that has a URL that's something that people don't recognize. So what you have to remember is when people are seeing these, they are associating that to your organization and. There are many, uh, many statistics related to people being hesitant to give because they might fear it's a phishing scheme or some other kind of thing out there. So this is a very important point, as well as the fact that everything is uniquely blended exactly to your brand guidelines, just like the website we showed. So I just wanted to chime in great with that. Great point. No, it's a great point. Look up here, the social cause. Nothing says Ariva. Nothing says Microsoft. Look at these guys. In this case, they're using Microsoft and they're using text to 71760. They've got an auction going on. But when you click out of that, if you click to donate, look at how the top will not change. All it does is say the social cog, donate now. Donor never, never thinks they're leaving your website because these are all linked. We can embed these yeah. really easily. We can work with your website provider or we can be your website provider. It's up and, to and you. Don't move from the page you're on for a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew there was a thought. As you're there, I want to point out one other thing. It's all about maximizing the giving opportunity, right? So one of the things that Ann alluded to, I just would echo for you, is that you're seeing things that are best practices and we continue to evolve and add more and more things. But things like having the ability to have cover the processing fee automatically checked or to have that set up, you know, statistics show that any if you leave it automatically checked as yes, most people somewhere near the neighborhood of 90 or 95 percent will say, of course I want to have the most go to the organization and to the cause, and that'll increase your giving. Things like tribute gifts, as Ann said, people will give more when it's in honor of someone. They just are compelled to. It's a human nature thing, and it's an emotional thing. And when it comes to recurring giving, the typical recurring giver or monthly giver will give five or six times as much as a one-time donor during the course of a year. So there's tons of those kinds of stats, but every one of those things helps you really be able to have what we would call a success strategy for not just end of the year, but all the way throughout the year for, for eternal right. results. What great points, David. One of the ways that uh, one of the houses I saw created a giving club, and the, the, the dues for the club were the number of rooms they have. They, this, ha this place has a lot of rooms, 170 rooms. And you had to give 1770 to join that giving club. So you can be super creative with a giving club based on the number of rooms or the number of years you've been around, you know, or anything like that, and create as many different pages as you want. Um, to David's point, you know, if you look at this particular chapter, yeah, that was right there where you clicked on how to stay or donate, being able to get right to those uh, pages and not see that change at all, uh, yeah. for sure. Beautiful. Okay, can I move on? Yep. Okay, because we're not leaving much time for Jay here. He's got a lot of good stuff to share, so I'll keep this brief. Um, what I went to log into Exceed Further today, and I got this message, and I did. I wanted to leave it up because this is an example of when we add a new feature to the program, you're going to get this kind of message that pops up that says, "Hey, by the way, we've just added the ability to text out of the program. Let us know if you're interested." I close that, and I can log into the program, but that gives you an idea of how you'll see those messages when you go ahead and log in.
So now I'm in the full program. Much different view than what you were seeing before where you saw just hospitality down on the left. You can still have that and use us for everything, but you turn on and off what you want to see based on your user rules. So right now I've got my giving up as a dashboard. I could have campaign up. I could have what's going on with events up uh, here in terms of registrations that have come in. So yeah, what's going on with my grants, any of those right here. If I look up an individual, let's look up someone so that, no, I'm not, let's see if I can spell there right. Um, and you can see that when you put in someone, you can put an alert in. And this one says banned from staying at the house. Okay, that's a biggie. <laughs> Maybe oh. friend of the executive director or something like that. But these are important things that you'll see when you log into the program. But when you see the household feature, which is what I alluded to earlier, didn't really focus on other than the two people, here's where you've got all the members of the household. They have their father living with them, and that person is now deceased. You've got a D. They've got their student that moved home during COVID, okay, their college student, so they're in there. But you've got the ability to put photos in of anybody, which is a new thing that I don't think a lot of you have in your current program. And then you've got the ability to show the relationship. If I look at their giving, what's great about this is get, Greg is also, if I look at relationships, he works for another company. Um, he's an employee of Smathers. Well, going back to the gifts, guess what? The green, what's highlighted here are gifts he's given on behalf of his company. I don't have to go look up Smathers to see that giving. I can see right here if I'm trying to get a feel for the whole relationship of their giving right here in his summary. If I want to go down and see when they stayed at the house, I can go down to the guest module and see that. And you can decide whether that's turned on or off for the development director, whether you want them to be able to see all that as well. But you have all these areas that you would drill down deeper in to see. The big thing is the reporting, as I talked about. So I don't want to I don't want to talk, you know, I don't want to miss that at all. So you've got analytics at your fingertips, of course, which are going to show you giving and maybe it's going to show you, you know, how donors are trending over the years, but also really telling you who are your lapsed donors, who haven't given to you. Being able to show that and being able to print lists like a Liebunt and being able to come in and once you've printed a Liebunt, being able to send an email to everybody in that and talk to them about their giving or their, their lack of giving. Um, being able to pull a transaction report and just show your giving so that you're ready to use a deposit that and having a summary at the bottom of everybody that's given. You know, the idea of trying to make as much in one program and not have you do data entry, we've got interfaces with all kinds of accounting programs, whether that's QuickBooks, Sage 50, um, all kinds of different programs. So we've got that ability as well. Well, David said that you're, you will get an email notification of those donations. You can see right here, this is where my gifts have come in, and I've had eight gifts come in. Those have already been sent a personalized thank you uh, letter that you've customized with video or with photos, but you can also acknowledge them again here. So if I go over to communications, um, what you're going to see here is the ability to send emails or, or letters. Um, so if I can do a new mailing, right here I can say letters and emails and being able to mm -hmm. um, send those out. And those can, you can really tailor those. So if I see a, a real, let's see if I look at a, a general thank you, let's see. Well, and Ann, these are this is the time of year where everyone's always talking about gratitude and giving, right? The stats vary, but you know, as many as 40 or 45 percent of donors saying they don't believe they were thanked uh, for right. a donation. You know, this oh. is this is about donor retention. This is about donor appreciation. Well, and definitely that brings me to like an end of year letter. I know in a lot of programs that's a challenge, but it, for us. You know, here's an example of an end of your email. Thank you for your support. The advancements we've made can be attributed to the many ways people like you have generously supported our mission. We're grateful for your generosity. Below is a summary of your giving for 2020. In addition to the merge fields you can drop into a program, you know, and, and that, that any merge field, even those user-defined fields you can pop in, you can put in merge tables. That's where you use the merge table is the end of the mm -hmm. year, all they're giving per household and being able to see that. That drops a merge table right in there as well as we've got a video. 
So you, I had somebody this morning said, our people don't do email at all. They're, they're older donors. Fine. Let's do a gift acknowledgement. We can, the great thing about this is you can do these simultaneously, and each household can be coded with what their preference is. So my preference is email versus someone else is regular mail. So you can certainly do a thank you that way too, a general thank you that still yeah. pops in those fields. Okay? So that would be communicating right out of the program. Uh, reporting, let's see. Um, the donations I was showing you, again, when those donations come in just like the guest requests, just like the event registration, all this, because you can see I have one event registration and eight gifts. And when these come in, you have flexibility, again, to come in here and be able to, you know, select that gift and, you know, edit it. If you see that that has not been entered, uh, they haven't spelled something right, uh, that street address is not right or something, you can come in here and, and edit that and clean it up before it checks for a duplicate. But otherwise, you can run that auto match and it's going to check for a duplicate. When you run an auto match, it comes all the way down and checks by a person. So this is how, you know, this is about data integrity. You know, we've, we've been around for a long time. We want to make sure you're not creating duplicates. So this is where it's really checking for a duplicate before it comes into the database. Okay? Um, I want to wrap up here because I can go yeah. into much greater detail one-on-one -on -one with any of you, but I want to leave time for Jay to cover all those important fundraising tools. So definitely. Yeah, no, absolutely. And thank you. And you will oh, yeah. and I will tell you that in terms of the, the, you know, integrity of the reporting and the level and the robustness of it, that was one of the key points we were vetted by, you know, other organizations, by national organizations. We've worked directly to meet the requirements for Ronald McDonald House charities for their radar reports. We work with, you know, BlackBot. That was a big piece when they looked at it to make sure. And that was part, part of their decision in deciding to sort of forego that. They just couldn't offer what we did. And uh, so that was an important piece. So you should be seeing my screen now with the ultimate uh, right next to the close uh, follow-up of integration brings a tear to my eye testimonial from uh, Soraya uh, Rivera Moyo at uh, uh, Ronald McDonald House Charities of South Florida. And uh, she just says, without Reba, what we do would be impossible. And about sums it up on that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and move to our next success strategy, which is about hybrid, blended, live, and virtual fundraising auctions and events. And I'm going to turn to uh, Jay to lead us. Uh, Jay, I don't feel rushed, you know, carry through it. We're going to keep going forward. We've got everyone staying with us. And actually, I don't know how this happened, but a couple people joined us uh, towards the end. <laughs> so we're just getting up. But rest assured, if you did have to jump, we will record this and send it out to you. So we're going to do it in its entirety. We don't have much longer to go till the end, and we will give everyone an opportunity to uh, request a personal one-on-one -on -one consultation. So Jay, go away. Or not go away. Go ahead. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm never going to live that one down. Jay, yeah, come back. No, <laughs> no, you're not. Well, well, first of all, thank you all for uh, – for hanging in there, hanging in there with us. Uh, I am not going to be able to show you everything Microsoft does, and I don't think you'd want to see it all right now anyway. But I do want to uh, assure you that if you are planning an event, uh, a, a fundraising event of some kind, we are a resource for you. And I would love to get one-on-one -on -one with anybody that, that's out there. Um, because I am an auctioneer and because Microsoft was born out of an auction management company 30 years ago, pretty much everything that Microsoft offers has been um, has been driven by client requirement with the goal of two things number one client success and two guest enjoyment so all of our products are designed to maximize both revenue and guest enjoyment and um, it, it, as as we know in the last uh, year year and a half uh, we had to shift gears everybody had to shift gear you had to shift gears on how you were raising money the uh, what we were doing three four five years ago to raise money at events didn't work in the last year and a half. And one of the options that, that none of us had was to postpone raising money because your operations continue. You know, everyone and everyone on this call had to continue doing what they do and doing it doing it well. And uh, that requires fuel in the tank. That requires, you know, money to to keep uh, to keep the operations going. So what we focused on in the last year and a half, uh, and and done an excellent job of, I, I might add, a little bit of a a little, a little bit of, if I can pat my own back, our own back, is that we uh, have done a really good job of helping clients focus on virtual events 
and hybrid events. In fact, what we've been recommending to people is that they plan for hybrid, because if they plan for hybrid, they can then have three choices. At the 11th hour, if it turns out they can go full in room, they expand the seating capacity and they go full in room. If they aren't able to have a, anyone in room uh, because they plan for hybrid, they can go full virtual and, and pull off a virtual event. And if they are lucky enough to, uh, to be able to put some people in room, then they, then they go ahead with their plans for the hybrid, which they've been planning all along. Um, one of the things that will really differentiate MaestroSoft from, from pretty much everybody else is that, that we conduct events ourselves. We are auctioneers, we are auction planners. And um, one, of the, one of the things that you'll find that's valuable about that is that uh, if I can use an analogy, when you build an event, when you build an event plan, you're building an airplane. And there are hundreds, if not thousands, of different kinds of airplanes out there. And then you hire an auctioneer to fly the airplane. Well, you may you may find a fabulous auctioneer who's really good at flying a certain kind of airplane. But when it comes to your airplane, you got a different kind of airplane. And there and you don't discover until the night of the event that that particular auctioneer that you hired doesn't quite understand how that particular airplane flies. So what we've tried to uh, do with, by providing auctioneers and consulting along the way is to make sure that, that we ride shotgun with you all along. We're part of your plan. We literally become part of your, of your uh, gala team so that when it comes time for the night of the event, you're not looking at, well, how come he said that? I thought we were going to talk about that. Or he's, he's using that term and we use this term. You, you want an auctioneer who can speak from the heart and say, this is what we do not this is what they do. And uh, and that's real important. Uh, your auctioneer is the most important visible person once people get in the room. Leading up to getting in the room, you're the most important people because you're doing the plan. But once the microphone's turned on and the person's on the stage, that person is is your tour guide for your, for your guests and needs to be using terminology that you're comfortable with needs to be addressing the the mission that, that you have, that sort of thing. So we'll always ride shotgun with you the, the whole way. So what I'd like to do is just quickly show you a couple of examples of events where we um, worked uh, literally side by side with the client and to get them to the night of the event and then help them put on that event in a virtual and uh, in, in hybrid manner. Uh, so uh, of course, uh, we're going to pop that slide on there. You'll see the Rich Shindig. That was a that was a year ago. That was Ronald McDonald House Siouxland. Wonderful event. Went very very successful. They had their own auctioneers, which is fine, but we worked with them in the planning stages ahead of time to uh, to make sure that uh, that uh, their plan was implemented using our software the appropriate way. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Jay, and, as you're uh, pulling that up, I, I, I know yep. you're you're going to be showing us some examples too. But it's kind of yep. an interesting point you mentioned. Red Shoe Shindig was a year ago. You know, there's things yep. that have happened going back some time. In a sense, we shared some slides, but how are how have things changed? Like, how is virtual different now, or hybrid different now than it would have well, been even well, six will, months ago? Yeah, well, I will tell you that a year and a half ago, the term hybrid really didn't exist because nobody was putting anybody in a room. It was all virtual. And the sophistication was let's set up a let's set up a, a Facebook Live camera or a YouTube, and let's let everybody at home kind of watch us, and we'll sort of communicate with everybody through the chat window. Uh, that was very unsophisticated. Uh, it worked because people had no other choice. But we've come fast forward now. Now these are highly produced event. Uh, these, these are highly produced productions. These look like Hollywood productions now. You've got a you know you have a uh, a video company involved. You have a, a technical director. You're moving in picture in picture and and overlays and lower thirds uh, messaging and all those sorts of things now. So when people are watching it, it looks like they're watching uh, something that's on cable TV, uh, you know, like like an ESPN kind of a production. And uh, so that's fast forwarded that that much now. Now with hybrid, what's different with hybrid is we're now integrating a camera for people in the room as well. So what we're doing is we're not only having the people at home watching the auctioneer and the items, but we now have the people at home watching the people in the audience having fun at the event. I'm going to show you an example of that as well. Jay, I'm going to ask if you could take your browser to full screen. Um, some folks who just yep. asked, so it's bigger. 
if I can figure out which, which one are you seeing? I'm We're seeing to go... the Oscars one, so just go right above it to the oh, see, maximized not, little square. I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing you, so I, I'm not sure why I can't see it. Oh, there it is. I have to move it out of the way. Hello. Okay. There we go. Now you're seeing it full screen, right? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Right. Thank you. I was I was looking at you guys on the screen. I, I know. Had... I have that same problem. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an example of of really taking an event and making it a full production. I should say a Hollywood production, but really making it a full production. It had everything going on. It had colors. It had themes. Uh, it, it had, uh, of course, the, the, the live video. One of the things that we did in the live video is, you know, we had the auctioneer asking for bids. We brought up on the screen uh, the item that was being bid on. We were letting people take bids. Uh, we were letting people produce bids live using our text-to-bid system. And what the auctioneer was doing is watching at home. I'll go full screen on this just just to give an example, it'd be easier for people to see. But uh, people were bidding using using their cell phone. And as the bids were coming in, you can see the bids are going up. And the auctioneer is able to actually see the, see those bid incrementing and is talking to the audience live. Now, this, is, this, is, uh, this was virtual. I'm going to move to hybrid in just a second. But literally, we were able to have people bidding at home, watching this production, this Hollywood production, using their cell phone to place the bid. And the auctioneer was able to watch those bids come in and actually had the names of the bidders. So we was able to actually talk about uh, how, the, how the bidding was. Harry's got the bid now at $2,400, but Bill might jump back in. Now Bill just jumped in at $2,500. Harry, are you going to do that? Maybe Harry wants to come back at $2,600. So we're literally watching watching the bids come in, in in real time. So let me come out of full screen on that. Let me give you another example. I'll stop on that one. This, this is a case, uh, this was a, a client that had planned a full in-room. They planned for hybrid. This is actually out of the hospitality uh, you know, industry here. This is FedEx Family House. They, uh, uh, they, they had planned a full in-room gala with 600 people. And literally three weeks, four weeks before their event, they had to go full virtual. And we were able to pull that off for them without any difficulty. We'll go full screen on this one as well. And again, this is right off of our Maestro Auction Online product here. Let me go ahead and, and, uh, and start this one. So in, in this case, we had the auctioneer in there. We had the backdrop in there. We saw the items in here. We're, we're calling the bids live, and we're, we're moving them through. We're seeing the bids coming in. The bids are coming in. We're talking to them live. Of course, we can integrate video in here or uh, things like raise the paddle, ask, you know, asking for, for the money. And then we can come back out of that, and then we can uh, let people – fast forward a little bit and show how the money's coming in. And so now we can put the thermometer up on the screen and we can say thank you. And people are seeing their names in lights up there. And we see that we raised $78,000 already by this point. Uh, so again, this is looking like a Hollywood production. This is not just somebody setting up a you know, Facebook Live and throwing it up there and saying, gee, let's hope somebody talks to us in the chat window. So that was, that was one, I'll show you one more. Jay, one thing I want to say, because somebody said this to me the, uh, in the demo today, is they said people couldn't find their event when they had it. And I said, with us, we, you provide the website that's a link right off their home page. They don't have to go absolutely. anywhere else. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's all part of it. And we ask them to promote it in social media and that sort of thing. Again, they're bidding using the text bid system. You'll notice it says text family 71760. Uh, each client has their own unique keyword. In this case, it was family. I'll show you one more. This was a this was a hybrid, a recent hybrid. And uh, on the hybrid, what, the element of having an audience involved uh, it was was kind of important. So this was um, here we put a we put a camera in in the audience, and again we're we're, we're watching the bids come in, and this is a. Uh, this was a chance to name your own pizza is what this was. You got to name your own pizza. And by the way, uh, for an entire year, every time someone bought your name pizza, the charity uh, got got a uh, got a bump, got got more money, which is kind of a great auction item. Get your local pizza parlor to donate a chance to name a pizza, create your own pizza. If anybody orders it, they make a donation to the back to your charity, which I thought was kind of, kind of cool there. But you see it's about $315 here. And uh, but by the time we got done with this thing, I mean this thing just just kept jumping and jumping. It went up. I think it ended up selling for like you know close to five hundred dollars or something like that. So chance to to name your own pizza. But again, the difference is we have the camera in the room, so this this allows people that are at home to see that there's that there's really an event going on. And uh, what's been really popular 
are, has been doing watch party. People are instead of selling tables at the at the event, if you can't bring people into a one room and have tables at the event, they're selling virtual tables and doing watch parties. Uh, so here they're, they're all cheering now because it's at four hundred eighty dollars now on the pizza. Um, and so this virtual watch party concept is fun. And then what we're able to do with our with our virtual event management system, whether we provide all the video uh, connectivity here, this what you're watching this production is our video uh, company doing this, our virtual event management company putting all this together. But we can go out to uh, watch parties and do shout outs from watch parties so that now the people watching at home can can become part of the act. So I wanted you to want you to see that as well. And then one more thing I was going to touch on real quick is uh, I wanted to show you on text a bit. I wanted to show you how we control all that. So uh, uh, cancel out of that. So uh, let me go to the dashboard here during event. Uh, go down to auctioneer view. And so this this is the auctioneer's view. And so the auctioneer sees the item. The auctioneer can talk about the item. The auctioneer can see the bids rolling in. This is how the auctioneer is kept informed. You see there's a lot of bids on this item, a lot of bids on that item. But what the audience sees, um, the audience sees was just one part of that. The, we spotlight just the, this piece for the audience, but it's all controlled from a control panel. So if we want to go to the next item over here, look, we'll just uh, pick, pick this one, uh, Big Texas here, and then you'll see that it'll change over here. And so again, this is a control panel that controls the item, and then the audience sees the view, and then the auctioneer sees the bid. So if you're planning on doing any sort of a hybrid, you want the audience to be able to see the item, you want the auctioneer to be able to see the bids, and you need a control. Someone operate the control panel to select those items along, along the way. And uh, if I could touch one more quick thing, is peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, the Maestro well, Auction Jay, Online. Before you, before yeah, you move ahead. to that, I just want to throw something out because we have some questions on mobile bidding. Right, yes. just kind of that. I'm just going to roll together. I'd love for you to tell people how to do a demo from their phone and what I'm going to do, or just to get an experience. I'm going to actually, for those of you who stayed with us, anyone who who follows Jay's directions here to see this, you're going to get an added value besides a great solution to look at. Uh, we're going to draw for a, a Starbucks uh, card that'll give you the opportunity to buy it yourself and maybe two or three friends of pumpkin spice latte. I don't know what they're going for these days, but. All right, well, I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what, our, our, our demo, I'm gonna turn our demo live now, it's live. This is the dashboard, this is the client dashboard. Your guests will never see this, this is what you where you operate. Take your phone, if you've got your phone handy right now, and I'm sure you do, there's probably no one watching this right now that's not within arm's length of their phone. Uh, take your phone and text, open up a text, and text uh, the word auction, to 71760, just to, so just do a brand new brand new text and just text the word auction to 71760. And Ann and I are participating, but we're not eligible, so don't worry, folks. Please join me. <laughs> <laughs> you can see us texting. I'm eligible, David. I'm doing the same. Thing. Okay, I can, you're doing it with your left hand. We're doing it with two hands. Okay. So. Okay, what's going to happen is when you text the word auction to 71760, you're going to get a link. You're going to get two links. Click on the link. It's going to ask for your first and last name. Pretty straightforward. And then you will be in our system. And it's that easy for guests to be able to to uh, to, to participate. And I don't know, can, can you still see my camera? I don't know if you can see my camera or not. But you can see yeah. that you should have a screen that looks like that. If you Okay? Yep. And so that's the demo, and I'll bring I'll bring that up on the screen now. A list of the items here, and um, so here, let's let's grab some items here. So you see on the screen you've got this, and you can start bidding. And the bidding you just click on uh, click click on the button that says online auction. Uh, you can search on an item or grab an item if you'd like. Go ahead and place a bid. Uh, confirm it, and you'll and you'll you'll place a bid. So do that. Start placing some bids. And again, as as the client, what you get to see is you get to see the list of your bidders. And so they're the list of bidders. This is all part of, there's seven people registered right now, as you can see in there. And then uh, at some point in time, David's going to tell me to select a winner. And I'll uh, click a button here that says random bidder prize. And you can do this during your event. One of the nice things you can do during your event is encourage everybody to register their phone. And again, if you're doing an in-room event or virtual event or hybrid event, it doesn't really matter. But during your event, 
just tell say that everybody that registers their phone will be automatically entered into a door prize drawing to win a weekend getaway or win a hundred dollar you know starbucks card or some other prize whatever you want and then when it's time to select the, the, the winner you just go here and you click random prize and apparently tiffany bitter 503 uh is is the winner she was bitter 503 so what i can do now is i can go in here to uh to to view my 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 bidders uh list my bidders and i can go to bidder 503 find her really quickly 503 there she is and tiffany i'm now going to tell you that uh you you won <laughs> and i can send her a text i just sent tiffany a text that said that she won so let's make sure that that tiffany uh knows that that she was the uh she was the winner so this is your dashboard this is where you operate uh through through the program okay so is that what you wanted me to, to show yeah and you can absolutely, absolutely and congratulations right. tiffany we got a 25 dollars starbucks gift card coming uh, to you again i don't know if that buys one two or three pumpkin spice lattes but you enjoy um we uh also are uh, going to be doing a similar drawing for anyone that's, that registers for the one-on-one -on -one demo so we'll be pulling one person from that i didn't mention it earlier but that's your prize for staying later so uh, so, Jay, did you have anything else that you wanted to show you? We're talking about a peer-to-peer -peer example. I want to I want to I want to wrap it up. I want to wrap it up real quick. Uh, Maestro Auction Online, which was the system that we were just seeing. This is all of these are these are all what we call Maestro Auction Online uh, sites. It has built into it peer-to-peer, -peer. and of course, Succeed Further has peer-to-peer -peer as well. But when you go to run your event, you can have a peer-to-peer -peer that's specific to your event which is nice. So integrated in into this particular event that's underway right now, this is a this is a, uh, a live peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer that was created by one of their peer-to-peer -peer, uh, donors, one of their one of their team captains, if you will. And of course, they, they can email it out to people and they can go in here and make their donation. But what I wanted to show you is how they've integrated in their auction as well by right in their peer-to-peer -peer, dropping in a a hyperlink that takes them right over to their main screen where they can then go in and participate in their auction. So the, the combination of peer-to-peer -peer with that event can work really nice. Maybe some people can't bid on your items. They may not be coming to your event, but in the act of inviting them to participate at your event, you can at sort of a, if you will, a, an exit strategy for them and still give them an opportunity to be part of your peer-to-peer, -peer, even if they're not gonna participate directly into the event. So that's, uh, that's all I had on my side. Well, that, I, I went very quickly, but I do want to let everybody know that one-on-one -on -one demos of any of this, one-on-one -on -one consultation on any of this is available to you. And uh, by all means, remember that when you hire an auctioneer, you're getting you're getting someone to lead your event. You want to make sure that auctioneer rides along with you during the entire planning stage, because it, it's only that way will that auctioneer be able to represent you fully the way you want your event represented to your to your guests. That's great. Thank you so much, Jay. Uh, I should be showing my screen now, I believe. Yep, you yes, are. See some, some testimonials. We're not going to pause there. You'll be getting the whole deck afterwards. The best, best practice is to bring it all together. You've seen a lot of this. It'll be included on the deck. Uh, we talked about Ariva and our solutions. So I'm just kind of zipping past this now to bring you back to the point where you can get a great, valuable uh, gift in terms of a free fundraising uh, strategy, donor relationship management, hospitality house operations and services strategy session with Ariva and Microsoft. And so all you need to do is just respond and let us know that that's something that you're interested in the chat box, or you can respond to the poll, which I seem to have just misplaced here on my screen. So give me a second as I'm doing that, uh, but I will bring it up as we move to questions. So I'm just gonna ask you also, you also qualify by asking a question because this is all about interactivity. And I'm going to begin, and I don't know where this came up. Uh, she may or may not still be on, but she'll certainly receive the answer. We have someone ask about, are you also able to track gifts in kind that are not monetary? And I'm yes. gonna say, and you gotta talk about the quarter of a million dollars of gifts in kind that Ronald McDonald House Charities of South Florida raised last year. Right, yeah, no, lots of gifts in kind. No, no problem tracking that. Okay, great. Uh, do we have other questions from anyone who's there as we kind of close up? Uh, otherwise, we've answered some of these throughout. There were multiple ones on, on text uh, mobile bidding. Uh, 
Uh, I know that was a question. One of the things was, I, and it was related to two or three different things on the SMS text messaging that is part of Exceed for that, you know, that is a uh, an offering for Exceed Further. Uh, I was reminded of this when Jay talked about how you can share out an event, right? So what's really neat about that is this is, Exceed Further is all about bringing everything together. Ariva and Meistersoft is all about bringing everything together and having multi points of communication. One of the beautiful things about the SMS text messaging coupled with all of our other solutions is that you can communicate Yes, you can send them a reminder, you can send out notifications, confirmations, but you can also, everything else that you can do, you can share out there. So you could share a page about an event, you could share the volunteer application or the volunteer opportunities out there, you could share things about a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, a team fundraising campaign. I'm just going off the top of my head. David, uh, are there other things that you think you've seen or heard of people sharing from this? No, I think you covered a lot of it, David. Yeah. I mean, just, just a, uh, honestly, you really did. It's just a, it's a, it's a, you know, the nice thing about our texting capability is we're giving you an opportunity not just to do it one way. You can either, like Ann was mentioning with the guest and saying it, it was a room. I mean, it, it could be, you know, hey, we're just a reminder, you know, you know, bid on the option that's coming up. Um, you can also send out and just saying, hey, would you give a donation? And it would link yeah. back the donation page. It could link back to an event page if you wanted to. So it, it gives it both from the push, the inbound, the outbound. It really provides a lot of flexibility. That's David, great. can I make a comment if you don't yeah, mind? Absolutely, please. Often organizations uh, in this industry are asked to be guest speakers at uh, Rotary Clubs and other service clubs. Come and talk to us about, uh, talk to us about, about what you're doing. And that's uh, an opportunity for you to ask for donations, right? When you're given that talk, don't ask people to go to your website because by the time they leave that particular talk, you know, they're gonna be completely distracted. They'll never make it to your website. But if you can hold up your phone and have the text, the text to, to fund right on your phone and say, if you'd really like to help us help these kids, you'd really like to help us, uh, you know, support the families that are coming to stay at our facility, how about everybody take out your phone right now and make a donation and they can do it right on their phone in the middle of your talk as you're watching and you can then you can put a thermometer even if you want up on a on a screen and let them watch the donations come in in real time that's the advantage of taking text donations as you can do it on the spot it isn't something you have to go do at a later date yeah yeah that's a tool that's just a great one to have year round in your toolbox to be able to have, use like when you're going out and speaking like that at any time to have that text and the name of the organization, really a quick way. That's great. So here's, here's our opportunity. If you want to sign up for our list, not, just raise your hand at this point. We'll contact you. We're going to share everything with you afterwards. Uh, but there is an opportunity here. So if you'd like uh, that free consultation and demo uh, at whatever length you'd like it, let us know. Yes, no, or maybe. Should be seeing this up on the screen right now. We've got a few folks uh, left that are responding again or in addition. So, uh, so definitely let us know and uh, or drop something in the chat box. I'm going to go ahead and bring us to a close, folks. Uh, you know, we will be reaching out if you. I'll leave it open live for a little bit if you have more questions. Uh, but we'll also be following up with you. So I just want to thank you from Ariva. I'm going to go around the group here and let everyone kind of uh, you know say their final words and or just their farewells. And thank yous. Um, so uh, from a, from my standpoint, I'm just going to move over first off over to uh, Jay and kind of work in reverse order and have you just uh, any final words or thank yous you want to share out there. I just want to thank you all for for hanging in there with us. I know we ran a little bit over time. Uh, hopefully you found that uh, that extra time valuable, and uh, we would love to to uh, to work with you in the future. Just let us know. That's great. And now I'll move to. Uh, uh, to Ann. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, really, we, we're here to, to help you, to help you serve more people in your community. And if our tools can help you raise more money to do that and do it in a more efficient way, please talk to us. We'd love to show you how we can do that and help you. Yeah, Thank you, Ann. It was a wonderful show and lots of great comments. And I'm just going to ask, uh, since you were gracious enough to join us, David, for you to kind of close us out. No, David. First of all, I'd like to thank Ann. You did a wonderful job. I mean, your thought leadership in this industry is just really priceless. It really is in the way that you've been helping so many healthcare organizations, not only locally, but 
literally worldwide. And, and you've just done an outstanding job. And I'm proud that I can say that, you know, I'm one of your team members. And, and Jay, I can't thank you for your level of expertise and your thoughtfulness. And, you know, you know, one thing that I've learned over time with you is you are always willing to help any of our clients wherever they are, however they need it, no matter at what time. And really, you know, you really are very passionate about their successes. And, and David, just, you know, you've always done a great job and, and, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into this and I can't thank you enough for behind the scenes curtains to get us to where we were today to, to really give a great audience. And I just want to thank you all for who joined today, you know, just really thank you for attending. I really hope you got something out of it. We, and like Ann said, and everybody else on this call said, we are truly not here just to sell you software, but we are truly here for good. I mean, and we're really proud that we can say our retention rate of our clients are over 90 plus percent. And when I say that, it's not like for a week, we have clients that have been with us for 10 and 15. And I hear, Ann, did you tell that? client that we were here so i hope you can join us and really it is a it's not a client it's a partnership so thank you for having us have a great day all right everyone thank you so much uh stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you soon thank you bye everybody okay.